What's up guys, my name is Dari and I hope that you have a wonderful day. What we've done so far was setting up our database, migrations, and we added dummy data inside our database. What I want to do right now is to put in our dummy data by writing down queries. At the core of every Laravel database, there is a functionality called the Query Builder, which is a fluent interface for interacting with several different types of databases with a single clear API. Let's hop to the code editor and right inside of our post controller, let me show you what a non-fluent query is. So let's say non-fluent db, let's select from our table called posts, where, so we want a where clause, our ID is equal to one. And this looks good if you're new, but it's not beneficial. You want to use a fluent interface because it primarily uses method chaining to provide a simpler API to the end user. So what you want to do is to say fluent, we want to db the table called posts, then we want to say where the ID is equal to one, and then we want to get everything. I want to start off very basic with raw SQL and build from there. Let's get rid of our return value, and let's also get rid of our comments. So an empty function. There are lots of different ways how you could handle what we're about to do. You can return it directly, you could create a variable, or you can just dump it on the screen. And that's actually what I prefer. So let's create a variable, posts, and let's set it equal to db, because we want to make a raw call to the database. Let's write down colon colon. And as you could see, a dropdown appears with all the options that we could use. There are some specific methods for various actions. So we can delete, insert, select, table, transaction, and way more. Right now, let's just use the select method. Now inside the select method, we can perform queries. So in our case, let's say that we want to select everything from the table posts. Right below our variable posts, we can dd, so die dump, and we need to pass in variable posts. Now, if we save it, this actually won't work if you go to the output. If we refresh it, you can see that our class DB has not been found. So what we need to do is to hop back to Visual Studio Code and right below our first use, let's create a new one of illuminate backslash support backslash vacates backslash DB. So we need to pull in our DB that we're using right here. Let's save it. Let's head back to Chrome, refresh the browser, and you can see that we've got an array back with three items inside of it. Post number one, post number two, and post number three. Be aware that this will return an STD class object. Later on, you will understand what this is. Most of the times, you want to use a select statement, but you usually want a where clause inside of your query. So something like this. We want to select everything from posts where the ID is equal to, let's say seven. Save it. Refresh the browser, we get one item back, so our ID, which is equal to seven. But since Laravel's database architecture allows for the use of PDO params, you are very safe for potential SQL attacks. So we don't want to pass in our ID number seven like this. What we want to do is to set it equal to a question mark. And then after a query, we could add an array, which is equal to the value of the question mark. So let's say seven, save it. Refresh the browser, get one item back, which is ID 7. Now, what we did right here is fine because we're using prepared statements. But if you're like me and you don't like the question mark, but if you're like me and you don't like to use the question mark, you could also use named params. So let's say that instead of the question mark, we want to pass in colon ID. And inside our array, we need to create an associative array where our ID is equal to 7. Save it, refresh the browser, and the output is still the same. Now what we've done so far had nothing to do with query builders, but it was me showing you that you could use your own queries, just like what we did. What I want to do right now is start off creating our own queries with the query builder because it makes it possible to chain methods together to build a query. So right above our post, let's create an ID and let's just set it equal to seven. Let's get rid of everything after the db colon colon. And what we want to do is to build a query from the table. So let's say table, which is a method. The table that we want is called posts. Now after the table method, 
let's use another method called where. So let's say we want to have a where clause. We can add it right after the table, but we could also add it on the line below. And that's actually what I prefer, since it's easier to read. So what do we want to see? Well, we want to check where our ID is ID. And what we want to do next is to get everything. And this is called a chain. At the end of our chain, we want to trigger the actual execution of the query that we just built by using the get method right here. Let's save it. Let's hop to Chrome, refresh it, and we have a collection. Let's open it with ID number seven. It is also possible to get a specific column. So right after our table method again, let's get rid of everything. And let's say that we want to select only the body and we want to get it all. And this will return the body of every single row that we have in our database. So we have three items back. The first one is the body of number one, body of number two, body of number three. So let's say that we want and the where method takes three params. The first one is the column. So let's say created underscore at comma. The second one is the comparison operator. So we want to see if created underscore at is greater comma. And you guessed it, the last param is the value. Now, sub day. Before we save it, it makes no sense to add the last param of now. If your goal is to see if something is equal to all right, let's add the get again, save it, hop back to Chrome, refresh it, and we have zero items back because our created item is not greater than now. But if we say less than, we're getting back all of our elements. All right, there's also an or where method. So right below our where, let's say or where, and this is basically an or statement. So if the where method isn't true, it will check if the or where is true and still print something out. So let's say that title comma is prof point. Change the title right here to a title that you have in your database because it might not be the same for us. Let's change the where clause to greater than. Let's save it. Let's refresh the browser. And you can see that we have two items. The first one has a title of prof and the second one as well. Another cool method that we could use right here is the where between method. So let's get rid of the or where and the where. So let's say where between. And this method allows you to scope a query to return only rows where a column is between two values. And honestly, we don't have the best data for this, but since we have an ID, let's just test it out with the ID. Right after our ID, let's add a comma, because we need to add a second param of an array with two numbers. So let's say seven comma nine. So we want to see if the ID is between seven and nine. Let's save it, refresh the browser, and we have three elements, which is true because we have ID seven, eight, and nine. The where between method includes two values that we have put inside the array. Why are seven and nine here? Well, the where method uses the two numbers that we have included inside our array. So seven and nine are included as well. And if we change it to one and five, refresh it, we get nothing back from the database. We could also select rows where a given column is null or it's not null. Right now, we don't have empty records in our database, but we could see if a value is not null. So let's say where, not null, the title. Let's save it, refresh the browser, and since our titles are not empty, so let's see, they are still printed out. There's also a where raw method, which allows you to pass in a raw unescaped string, and I actually don't prefer using this because SQL queries will not be escaped, and this is the right opportunity for hackers to attack your application. So let's just skip this one. Another cool, another pretty cool method is distinct. So let's get rid of the where raw. What this thing basically does is selecting rows where the selected data is unique. Now, in order to do this, we need a select because we want to select a specific column. So let's say title on the line below. Let's add distinct. Right now, we do have duplicates in our database. 
let's go to iTerm. You can see that we have two titles with the name Prof. So we should be getting back two rows. Let me save it. Let's go to Chrome, refresh the browser, and you can see that we have two rows with two different titles. There are also a couple methods to modify data, such as order by, group by, skip, take, latest, and in random order. So let's cover them all right now. The first one is order by. So let's get rid of distant and select, and let's say order by the title, and I want it to be ascending. This could also be descending, but for now, let's just keep it ascending. Save it, refresh the browser, open our array. You can see that the M comes before the letter P. The skip and take are two methods that I want to skip for now, because later on, I want to show you how we could easily create pagination. These two methods allow you to define how many rows to return and how many to skip before starting the return. We can also sort our database based on the created add column, and that's very easy. So what we need to do is to get rid of the order by, and let's just write down the latest. Let's save it. Let's go to Chrome. If we refresh it and open our array, you can see that it's based on the created add in descending order. 2155 is the latest for the second one as well. But the third one is 2154. We can also order them in an ascending order, but we don't need to add it as a param. You just need to change the latest to oldest. Save it, refresh the browser. Let's open it one more time. And you can see that 2154 is the first one. And the second one is 2155. We can order them in a random order. So instead of saying oldest, let's say in random order, save it, refresh the browser, and let's check the order, ID 7, 8, 9, well, this doesn't make sense, so let's refresh it one more time, ID is 8, 7, and 9. Besides the get method that we're using right here, there are a couple other returning methods. If you don't add a returning method, you will always return an instance of the query builder. So I want to cover a couple other returning methods. Now let's get rid of everything. And let's say order by created underscore at comma descending. Instead of saying get everything, let's say get me the first one. Save it, refresh the browser, and the first one is ID number eight. And you can see that there is a limit of one added to it. The issue that you could cover with the first method is that you will get an error message if there are no results. We can use a method that will find a row with a specific ID for us. So let's go to Visual Studio Code. Let's get rid of the order by. Let's replace first with find. And let's pass in the ID that we have right there. Save it. Refresh the browser. And we found a specific ID. But if we change it to, well, let's say ID 10, refresh the browser, we're getting no back because it does not exist. We could get the count of the matching results. So let's say where our ID is equal to ID. And instead of saying find, we want to return the count. Save it, refresh the browser, and the output is one because our IDs are unique. And if we return the where method, we're basically selecting every single row that we have in our database. So the return value is three. Another cool method is the minimum and maximum value of a column. So instead of saying count, let's say the minimum is from the table ID. And you can see that it's seven, which is true because we have seven, eight, and nine. And the maximum needs to be nine. So let's test it out. And you can see that the output is nine. And the last two return methods are the sum and average. So let's just test it out with our ID. Let's say that the sum of our ID is 24. So we will add up every ID that we have. And the average, save it, refresh it, is eight. Pretty important thing is inserting data in the database. What we need to do is to get rid of the average and let's say we want to insert something inside of our database. Inside our method, let's add a set of brackets and let's hit enter because we want to pass it in as an array. So what do we want to pass in? Well, we want the title of new post, comma, 
we have a body of new body. Let's save it. Let's go to Chrome, refresh the browser, and you can see that the output is true, which is good because this means that it worked. So to test it out, let's go to iTerm. Let's say select everything from posts. And you can see that we added a new post inside of our database. Since we have inserted a new world with the ID of number 15, let's update the title because that's also possible. So let's go to Visual Studio Code. Let's go right after our table because we need to have a where clause. So we want to update it where our ID is equal to 15. Now we don't want to insert, so let's get rid of that as well. What we want to do is to update. And once again, we need to add a set of brackets and we want to set our title to new title. And let's also change the body. So the body is updated body. All right, let's save it. Chrome, refresh it. The output is one, so this is a Boolean. So it's either true or false. Let's go to iTerm, hit the arrow up. So we want to select everything from posts again. And you can see that the body has been changed to updated body. And to complete our CRUD functionality, let's perform a delete query. So let's go to Visual Studio Code. We can keep the where clause, but we need to get rid of the update. So what we need to do is to delete. So let's write that down. Now a cool thing about the delete method is that we don't need to pass in anything inside our parentheses because it will delete it based on the where method. So let's save it. Let's go to Chrome, refresh the browser. Output is still one. iTerm, hit the arrow up. And you can see that our ID 15 has been disappeared. This was it for this video about query builders. If you do like my videos and you want to see more, or you just want to support the channel, just click on the subscribe button down below and don't forget to like the video.